Assalamu alaikum, Christmas time is here. The markets are ready, Slovakia is booming. But in this video I want to share my thoughts on the whole Christmas market thing as a former Christian and now a Muslim and also still Slovak. So look at the tree behind me. This one is really huge. Actually it looks pretty cool. So if we really boil it down to what's the point of Christmas markets and the whole Christmas holidays in Europe specifically and if we go far back enough it doesn't have to do anything with the birth of Jesus Christ. Peace be upon him because Jesus Christ wasn't born on the 25th of December and this is pretty established fact. So what is this holiday actually? Not just Christmas but the entire Christmas period all the three to four weeks of Advent we call it here where you light a candle every Sunday and you wait until the Christmas uh, day 24th 25th depending on where you are in Europe here it's 24th you get gifts from here we get the gifts from baby Jesus in the Western Europe they do with Santa Claus which is I don't know who that is what's it really about it does it have anything to do with Christianity or not really because it sounds like it does it sounds like this entire holiday is for Christianity is to celebrate the birth of your Lord Jesus Christ what about the trees is there any tree in the Bible is there anything that says in the Bible you should have a tree to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ or God not really so where this tree came from what is this about and then you learn that oh the tree is a symbol of an evergreen tree from the Nordic uh, region which was brought over to the continental Europe and it's to celebrate the winter solstice the pagans of Vikings used to put uh, nice shiny stars and lights on the tree but it has nothing to do with Christianity it's a pagan holiday so why is church okay with this why does church pretend that the tree is somehow related to Christmas and Jesus and all that what about the date itself is it so important well we realize that this is the day 24 25th where winter solstice is like the longest day of winter so that means that the, the sunlight is very short even now like I think in one hour it's 3 p.m. almost in one hour it's gonna be complete darkness so this is the especially if you go far north in Europe you get complete darkness um, at like 3 p.m. so pagans used to celebrate uh, not celebrate but they would throw this festival of winter solstice because they knew from this day forward we would have longer sunlight longer longer days and so it relates to the crops and also the the the, the nature and everything like that so related to the earth and the worship of the earth itself why did Christianity mix up with these pagan things which we can find all over it's Easter it's basically not Christian it's pagan switched up or blazed up with Christian faith but not really well because the Romans when they accepted Christianity and they were spreading it in Europe they knew it's gonna be a problem to convince Christians to have circumcisions and all that so they they changed the religions they changed the law they changed many things and so people think that this is what Christmas is about because they get together with their family and they see them after a long time they sing songs and all that and that's nice there's nothing wrong with that however the spirit of Christmas as it should be in terms of the church or Christians should be to celebrate the 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 life of Jesus but this is not the point because most people who celebrate Christmas are not religious a lot of them are atheists so why do they celebrate it well because they are culturally conditioned to celebrate Christmas because everybody does it like are we that stupid that we just do whatever we we do because people around us do it I think we are that stupid I mean to be honest I wouldn't I would still celebrate celebrate Christmas even though I would be I would be an atheist once I left I mean once I disbelieved in any god or anyways I was an atheist so I would be celebrating Christmas just because it was a good opportunity to get drunk and hook up with girls and I would be celebrating all these all these Christian holidays because it's just a good time it had nothing to do with spirituality nothing to do with Christianity nothing to do with any of that because at this point it's a secular holiday and if you realize the Church of England until 1795 or I'm gonna butcher a date but until then they actually forbade to celebrate Christmas because they saw it as a pagan holiday that has nothing to do with Christianity and what the Bible teaches 
So again, what is this about? All of this is a history of European paganism. All of this, lights, these snowmen, these trees, all of this is a history of European pagan holidays mixed up with a Christian flavor. How many gods are there who died on the 25th of December and then died for your sins and all that? How many of them? Well, there's quite a few. I don't know a precise number, but this, in terms of mythology, this has been consistent. Nothing new here. Jesus was born. God was born on Earth. What is God? Well, God is outside of the time and space clearly or he's not limited by time space nothing he's independent he's all-powerful he's all-knowing he doesn't begin or he's does he give birth he doesn't have offspring that's a logical concept of God most people would agree yeah this is God for us even Christians agree yeah that's the God but of course then you mix it up with the Holy Spirit and Jesus and all that son of God can this God can this entity that we just described that is far beyond our imagination and has has all these attributes which are not from this world they cannot be here and if he misses one of those attributes it's not a god like flying spaghetti monster anything that's tangible that can be split into pieces it's not god um, basically anything that can be divided also is not god can this thing can this being die or can this being be born in a human mother mary in a, she can, can she give birth to a god and can God be limited enough to go to the toilet, which Jesus did, or eat food? Can you imagine that? God, unlimited, all-powerful, all that. He needs to go to the toilet. Just think about that. That's the Trinity. Even though, okay, he's in a different nature, he's co-equal or whatever. It's still God going to the toilet, dude. That's crazy. At this point, Christmas holidays, if I were to go and ask these people around me, why are you celebrating this or whatever? It's not about Christianity. It's nothing to do with Jesus. Nothing to do with Jesus. It's mostly because, hey, it's a nice time of year. Family gets together and we can hand the gifts over. And basically people are stressed. People are taking like loans to buy gifts. It's all materialism now. So if the ads for Christmas start in October, so this whole thing is just a big commercial holiday. I wanted to explain why as a Muslim I don't really celebrate any of this. Because people don't get that. Like, if you're an atheist, you can still celebrate Christmas. There's nothing wrong with it. But if you're a Muslim, no. There's something wrong with it. And what's wrong with it? Well, the thing is, Muslims, we believe that God, as I've described, He is just one, all-powerful, indivisible. He doesn't begin, doesn't give offspring, all that. So that's the highest level of truth. That's the highest level of realization. Once you realize there is a creator and this creator has created you. So you're obviously in complete need of this creator. He's not in the need of you. He's, you're in the need of him. That's all that matters. The, the relationship is subservient. You cannot, you cannot fool the creator. And so once you see people worshipping things which are not creator I couldn't get that like why is shirk which is so associating partners with Allah associating other gods with Allah so let's say this trash can is God or Jesus or whatever pagan symbol or this cow associating partners that's the biggest sin in Islam and I couldn't wrap my head around why but of course it makes sense like the, if God is the highest truth the highest whatever and we take let's say this tree or whatever and we celebrate it as God. We pray to it and we worship it by giving it our attention, by obeying it. You don't have to worship and pray to it, but just going to a concert and, you know, jumping up and down for a singer, anything like that. That's a problem because you, you're associating partners with God. Only God is worthy of worship. This is the tenant of, this is the major point of Islam. Only God is worthy of worship. No one else is worthy of worship. Not your family, not yourself, not other humans, not anything created. Basically, anything that's created is not worthy of worship. So that's why we say Jesus was created. He was born. He had to go to the toilet. He's not worthy of our worship. He's a great prophet of God. Can't help you. Mother Mary can't help you if God doesn't help her. Because only God can help you. And God can hear your things. So if you want to pray, pray to Him. If you want to... If you have sins and you want to repent, just repent to him directly. Don't go to the, to the priest. 
like all these things are human inventions and you know I used to love Christmas as a young kid because it's an exciting time where you get gifts you get together with family there's this sense of wonder and secrets because you were waiting for Jesus or Santa Claus or whoever and then you learn it's not real and then you learn by the age of 15 that God doesn't exist which I learned like oh I'm an atheist now and then you learn when you're older that no actually God does exist but you were just part of a culture which, which is shirking it up which is just associating partners with God but God does exist and the truth is Islam in Islam we have two holidays and I can explain why we celebrate them Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha -Ah, al Eid al-Fitr is after the end of Ramadan to celebrate the end of Ramadan the end of fast Eid al-Adha is to celebrate Abraham's sacrifice of uh, Ishmael and so that's why we do it we have evidence why we should do it from Prophet Muhammad from the Quran from the Sunnah and that's it we don't need to think about oh why do I have to celebrate Christmas Jesus wasn't born and all that no we have clear evidence that's it we have two holidays we can even get gifts let me know what you think about Christmas markets in Europe yeah they are nice beautiful outlandish but essentially the idea is empty it's the same as the churches churches are beautiful cathedrals are beautiful and all that but they are empty people go there just to check out the architecture they don't actually go there for any spiritual fulfillment and the same thing is true here but the best part about this the best part is about to be revealed right behind me there's Jehovah witnesses doing some dawa do you see them right there so maybe we can go to them and talk to them about Jesus <laughs> can I come to them and say hey have you guys heard about Jesus man that would be great but I don't really want to go there because those guys are kind of like if you step onto their main belief it's gonna be crazy you know can you imagine playing some Quran American guy playing here anyways assalamu alaikum see you in the next video